So Aerospike. So Aerospike is a, is a newer-ish database, NoSQL database, that, uh, you, that is optimized for SSDs, which is very helpful because most modern cloud platforms have SSDs. DigitalOcean gives us to SSDs. Um, so that's very good. With, that, with SSD optimization, it means it's not going to wear out your SSD quite so fast with writing to it all the, all the time. Aerospike will also run in memory, meaning that it can replace both the App Engine data store and the App Engine memcache, both at the same time. It, runs, it functions as both, which is really cool. It also is pretty, relatively easy to set up so it can run on multiple nodes. You just install it on each node, make sure you got all the ports unlocked, tell it which, uh, and then uh, you don't even have to tell what IP. It'll just search, for, search on LAN for what other nodes are in its area, which is, again, really nice. And then, it, and then with multiple nodes, you can expand your database really easily. Just add another node in. You have more space now and more speed. So it self-configures. You just have yeah. to make sure that it's stall installed on your network, on a different machine with the ports open and located yep. them all. Yeah, and give it a different ID. You must okay. manually give it a new ID, an ID, a unique ID for each machine. But still, that's that's really easy still compared to a lot of things. And you don't have to and your debt your uh, your code does not have to worry about how Aerospike's doing it. You give it the IP address of any node, and the first thing it'll do is ask that node what's the other nodes. You don't have to worry about it. So um, Aerospike only works for 64-bit. They made that silly stuff where they've got a uint that's uh, too long for a 32-bit machine, so it doesn't actually work 32-bit at all. So the, there's the step-by-step -step instru installation instructions here from the Aerospike website, or you can just follow my instructions down here. So this command, just wget, will download it. Um, here we are. CD back to home. So let's uh, wget dash o dash capital O, what name we want to call it once it's downloaded, and then the file name, which is Aerospike download server server latest Ubuntu 12. Boom. So much faster than if we downloaded to our system. I'm pretty sure DigitalOcean is using fiber for their uh, network. They've got a really fast internet. So if you're downloading something from far away, it might almost be worth to just download it to DigitalOcean and then just uh, SCP it over to your machine. <laughs> so, so now you got aerospike.targiz there. So here's the extraction command. Extract it. So what that did is it created a folder here, Aerospike Server Community 3.6.4. So you can CD into that. And then you will sudo dot slash as install. They gave a nice installer for you, which is rare for Ubuntu stuff, for a Linux stuff. So that's uh, installing everything as needed, including downloading and installing things like Python as needed too. We don't have Python on our system, but Aerospike server does require it, so it went and downloaded it and installed it for us. And if you already have it? If you already have it, it'll detect that and, and okay. use it. All right, okay, so, all right. so Ubuntu uses a package manager, uh, app-get, um, so it's a bit literally just asking the package manager, does, do we have Python installed? No? Install it. So it gives a, this nice red error message, which, or I guess command, and there's some other messages up here in other colors, which uh, so, sometimes look like they're uh, error messages. It's working. Don't worry. It's working. Um, all right. So if we're on multiple machines, we got to configure our our firewall. We're on the same. We're running it all on the one machine though, so we don't have to. But if we want to, you can call ifconfig, which gives you a nice listing of all your internet access points. So you got LO, which is our local loopback, which is our local host IP address. You got Ethernet 0, which is this IP address, which is our public IP address that we get from the DigitalOcean.com website. You got our e Ethernet 1, which is this IP address, which is the private IP address that we created when they created a private network for us. You don't charge for bandwidth off of this, so anything coming in through Ethernet 1 is free for you. And presumably really fast because it's running on a local host. Uh, on a local LAN network. So you have multiple machines, you just use Ethernet 1, so, and you would use this uncomplicated firewall command, which is actually a pretty complicated command, to enable it. So you're saying sudo for admin, uncomplicated firewall, allow inbound traffic 
on Ethernet 1 to any port, to, to anything on port 3000 using prototype TCP. Wow, cool. So this will allow port 3000 TCP, but only if it's coming, through, coming in through Ethernet 1. It's coming through Ethernet 0, which is our public IP address, it'll block it. Which means, so, so if we just type, if so if someone else just wrote a program to try to connect to our database and try messing us up, our firewall will block it unless it's coming from our own servers. Considering that Aerospike does not have, the Aerospike Community Edition does not have any kind of password protection whatsoever, we need this. So the, uh, if you're paying for it, they'll give you nice password protection, so you have to have the password. But since we're not, we have to use, we have to protect it in our own way, which the easiest way is simply say you're not allowed to access it unless you're from one of our servers. So, but we're running localhost, so we don't even have to bother with this. By the way, if you're, run, if you're running a cluster with multiple servers, you'd run by on port 3000 for general access. Port 3001 and port 3002 are both needed for it to detect other servers and uh, other uh, aerospike nodes and create its cluster. So you didn't want to allow those uh, 3001 3002 as well if you're running multiple machines for your aerospike server uh, database. Once you've got it installed, you'll run uh, sudo service aerospike start. And that'll start it up. And there's this nice command here, which I got from the aerospike website which will tell you, which will print out one line when it's done. Service ready. Soon there will be cake. <laughs> so control C once you see that line, it's running. Um, alternately, you can do sudo service aerospike uh, status. And it'll tell you active running. But I think I like their, I like uh, Aerospike's personal uh, command to tell when it's done that starting up better. Um, so go back here and we can remove the two Aerospike files. So dash R Aerospike star. Okay. So we got rid of the Aerospike file, or Aerospike targ is and the extracted file. And okay, Aerospike is running. So there's the Aerospike management server here is the next step. This is actually optional, but if you want to see what your database is doing, this is really, really good. So you need to make sure you got Python, GCC, and the Python development files for integrating Python and C together all installed. So luckily, our app-get package manager for Ubuntu can deal with all that for us in one line. Yes. All right, it's installing a C compiler, Python interpreters, and how to integrate between them. All right, done. It's a lot easier than Windows, huh? Oh, yeah. I love that So let's download uh, the, the uh, Aerospike Management Console. Done. All right. So let's install it. So we can, it does, this one doesn't come with an installer, but it's a dot, pack, it's a uh, dot, what's it, deb file, which Debian and Ubuntu systems can install. This is actually what app-get is using. So, but app-get is also is for the internet access, and then internally for actually installing it, it uses a program called uh, dpackage. So dash dpackage, dash i for install, and we give it the dev file. Installing. Done. Um, you'll need to allow port 80, 8081 through the firewall in order to be able to look at our own, at our management console. So uh, sudo allow 8081 TCP. And, uh, and we start it with this command, which is completely different from every other background process command, start command there is, but it works, I guess. I think that's actually a system B file that's probably running due to backwards compatibility, or init B, I believe, but it works, so. All right, now we can go to our IP address, colon 8081. And we're on the Aerospike management console. So we need to tell it where our Aerospike uh, server is. So you can actually install this Aerospike management console on your own machine and just connect from there to your database. But I like to run it on that machine because we're not letting our firewall open for, uh, so, for it. So we tell it the local host, 127001. Because it's going from, from the Aerospike management consoles on the server 
to itself to the Aerospike cluster, which is on that same machine. Why was it port 3000? So in port 3000 is the, is the port that the Aerospike database runs off of. Okay. So I think that I'd want to show my website port, which is running 9000, right? Yeah, our website's running 9000, but we're not ex this is not accessing our website. It's accessing Aerospike. That makes sense. So you can see, you got this nice thing. You got one node. One of them is up. One of them's down. Nothing's down. Got two namespaces, which are basically separate databases, test and bar. Um, it's using zero bytes out of the eight gigs that it's been told it's allowed to use. And it's not using anything on the hard disk. No reads, no writes. We can actually turn off a node right here, which is really cool. Which is also why you will want to uh, close that port when you're not using this service, because you don't want someone to just guess, look at that port, and then turn off all your database nodes. Um, and then you can see our two, our two uh, namespaces, which are basically the separate databases. So you'd have one namespace for each website, I guess, you've got running off right. these off of Aerospike. I got a question for you. So uh, you say close the port when you're not looking at the management console? Yes. So you've got uh, our uh, uncomplicated firewall. Yeah. We can show its status. Yeah. You've got all these ports that are open. Yeah. If we do status numbered, it'll give us numbers for it. And we can do sudo uncomplicated firewall delete and then a number. So, let, so which one is the one that's our uh, so management console? We're running, running on 8081. Okay. And... Um, Aerospike doesn't need a password, the management console. You just have to nope. know the you have to get in, and the port. Which is why I'd say destroy, close your firewall on the management console when you're not actually looking at it. Yeah. Because otherwise, they can come in, they can hit this button, and suddenly your database is down. You don't want random people doing that. Okay, so what's next? Okay. But if we bought the whatever the. Yeah, if you bought the enterprise edition, the enterprise. you could put passwords on stuff, and then it wouldn't be as vital. Um, let's remove the uh, the .deb install file. Okay, and now, okay, configure namespaces. So this file here slash etc slash aerospike slash aerospike dot config is our uh, is the is aerospike's configuration file. Aerospike. Oh, der, pseudo, nano. OK, so big, big config file. Um, there are a bunch of options for it, including you have to set up a, a couple options for if you want your cluster running. I've got a link here to uh, the Aerospike website, the section for configuring this file. I'm just going to say at the bottom of the file is where you can configure your namespaces, which is your separate databases. So like right here, it says namespace test um, is going to use about four gigs of RAM. It'll clear itself out every 30 days if need be, and it's going to use and it's just going to store it all in memory, which means the computer goes down, it loses everything in it. This basically means this, na this test namespace is similar to memcache from uh, App Engine. So bar down here is set up to the same thing by default, and it's got these, but it's got this nice commented out section here for how to set it up with a hard drive. So you can use these two things as basically templates for your own namespaces. Need more? You need your own namespace? Copy one of these and use it. So I'm just so the the code I wrote to use Aerospike uses the bar namespace. So I'm just going to do that. So set the default TTL to zero, time to live to zero, which basically means infinite. We don't want to lose our data after 30 days. Keep it around. Um, comment out storage engine memory, and instead enable storage engine device. Storage in a device, you tell storage in a device, you tell it the file where it's going to store everything. So it's going to go here and it actually where it's storing the database. It's going to use 16 gigs for that file. And it's and I say data and memory true, which means it'll still use the RAM as needed for fat, for faster speeds. So we will have the speed of memcache, but it's persistent like a database because it will store it all in RAM as if it's got space for it. But then it'll also store it on that hard drive. So if we lose our system goes down for a, for a reboot or something, it can still get everything. So yes, exit, save, sudo, service, arrow, spike, restart. Boom. 
Now if we go back to our uh, management console, let's refresh, localhost again. There we go. You can see it now says that it's allowed to use 16 gigs of hard drive space. If we go down here, it says the bar namespace is allowed to use 16 gigs of hard drive space. And it's got 99% of that available. So presumably it used a little bit for uh, setting up its indexes and such, even though it's empty or something. Whatever the case may be, it's now configured and it can run. So the Aerospike client library can be found here, github.com, Aerospike, Aerospike client glow. You can just go get that. Um, once you've gone and got, so I'm going to actually go get that now on the uh, server because it comes with a benchmark tool for testing how fast your Aerospike cluster is going. So you can go into that with this command here, which actually just goes into go path, your workspace, source, GitHub, Aerospike, Aerospike client, tools, benchmark. CDN, go, run, benchmark.go dash h and the IP address of your cluster. So this is running on the server with the cluster, so it's the localhost again. Okay, now if we go back to our, our management console, you can see it's getting some writes per second now as it's benchmarking. The benchmark tool goes to the test namespace, which is running all in memory, so we don't have to worry about it killing our hard drive here. It's all just running in RAM. We are currently running at uh, 101,000 writes per second. Wow. So and it's still just kind of starting up right now, I think. Or not. <laughs> so yeah, we, we hit 101 writes per second there during that benchmark. No issues. It was just sending a bunch of stuff to test it, basically. Yeah, okay. yep. And this also lets Aerospike basically examine how fast it is on, the, on this machine and uh, configure itself to optimize. Because now it's like able to figure out, oh, we've got this much RAM available to us, and our processor's about this fast. So it's a good idea on a, when you first add a new machine to benchmark it too, so it can ex basically examine its environment. Um, over here. Okay. Um, oh, I've got this IAF config grep INA adder line here. Um, basically, you put the punch that in, and it gives you just the IP addresses from our three machines for if you just run IAF config. Um, so you can see there's the, the public one. There's the local host, and there's our private IP. So you can use that command real fast if you need your private IP. OK, what's okay. inet adder again? Uh, internet address. And so I have config gives us all the information about our oh, network okay, devices, okay, and then grep searches for yeah, yeah. something. Um, all right, so next up, let's us. Uh, Go turn on our uh, Aerospike uh, server. New video? Um, yes, but first let's uh, remove this stuff. All right, yeah, new video.